My name is Tom Huffman. This video is an explanation of the factors that have influenced my teaching of Aiki weapons over the years here at Aikido of Gainesville. When I started at Sunset Cliffs in 1986, the weapons teaching was slow and deliberate and very stylized, following almost exactly how Saito Sensei taught. When I got to Japan in 1990, Hitohiro Saito was the only one that I knew of teaching south of Tokyo one night a week. So I got one night a week in the Iwama style. Within four days of arriving in Japan, I was introduced to Nisho Sensei and encouraged to go and practice with him. I found that Nisho Sensei taught in a different place every night of the week. So I followed him and practiced with him or his senior students and I would get four or five nights a week with Nisho style. The atmosphere in the Nisho style dojos was very different from the Iwama dojo. People had been with him for 10, 20, 30, and a few of them for 40 years. So things went much faster. Nisho sensei taught at very fast speed and all the students went at very fast speed. So I was showed how to move my hands and feet a few times and then we were off to the races and it was keep up. When I arrived here in Gainesville in 1997, after I retired, I taught at the University of Florida Ike Weapons in slow and deliberate, just like Saito Sensei. However, it wasn't very long until those students were gone and new ones coming in. And the ones that left, they didn't know very much. So I learned to ramp the speed up so that it wasn't very long until I had people going at full speed. I still teach stop, start, then the mutual movement with pause, and then the full speed levels, but I get to the full speed much faster, and then from there it's increased speed. So what I'm teaching is more advanced. That doesn't mean that I deviate from the book. I teach pretty much right out of the book. We follow things right out of the book. When you're doing things at high speed, things show up that are different from the low speed. There will be some explanations in the videos that are a little bit different than what you may have heard in other dojos. And this is because of these other influences that I've had over the years. I've also uh, had a lot of influence with the sword. My sword movements are a little bit different than the standard Iwam movements because I'm thinking of it as a sword and not as a wooden sword. I'm, I'm thinking of it as a blade. So I teach it as a blade. So that's how I teach Aiki weapons here at Aikido of Gainesville, here in Gainesville, Florida. This is the second Kentai Joe. We're going to show it in Stop Start to get the effect of the pictures. But I'm also going to show it at high speed. And at high speed, it's a good luck, a good luck. Nisho Sensei would say, Gambate, Gambate, when he figured something really wasn't going to work. Saito Sensei starts in a ski come on. So, so you jump back, I'm dead. He can get into there. Then you can get in, you're striking either the elbow or the side. Depends on how deep you get in. And I'm always telling my students that distance is time. So if I take the time to go here and then jump back, especially if I jump back before I cross, that's a major good luck. If you take this up to high speed, you're crossing the tip of a sword coming in at you in a ski. In Nisho style, I'm going underneath the blade a lot, but not across the tip if there's a thrust. And, and I have to jump to get the turn in of my body. So if, if I took the time to step and, and turn like that, um, I'm going to get skewered. I'll be shish kebab. Let's, let's look at where, where the bokeh is once I've jumped into it. If I've got a strike here that could have hit, and I go to here, this is right there. That's one fist width. He doesn't have to go very far. He's got a full step he can do, and that obscured clear through me. So, um, not a good position to be in. We're, we're looking at some realism to it. 
and seeing what benefits we can get out of that, that type of practice. So I'm, I'm kind of jumping. I'm taking the center and knocking his boken off my line. That Joe has to disappear really fast to get that up and, and be off of his point before he skewers me. As I knock it off the line, I want to stop right on his center. As it goes up to high speed, so I can't, I, I have to change and knock that broken out of the way. So I can't get far enough, so I've got to take his boken, so I, I've got something else that I can do. I can come into here. That much will work, but you, you have to change the thinking. And so, um, and I'm, I'm also, when I'm blocking that, I'm dropping my right hand, so I, I've got a good angle to make sure I hit that blade. If I keep this up like this, and I miss that blade, I'm, I'm, I'm shish kebab. So I, I have to do like that. If I go so fast. quite a bit different at the higher speed. <laughs> 